Hello, welcome to chapter 14, lesson 2. Today we're going to be talking about polygons. So these are just shapes, and, and the word poly means more than one. So they're shapes, well maybe it means more than two, because you have to have more than two sides to have shape. Um, but anyways, a polygon is a closed, well what does closed mean? Let me tell you. So like if we had a shape that was like this, you can get inside of it. So it has to be closed up, but there's no way to get inside. It is two-dimensional figure. So a two-dimensional figure just means it's flat. It's on a piece of paper. You cannot hold it. it that would be 3D if you could hold the shape. You cannot hold it. It is flat, uh, two-dimensional. Formed by three or more straight sides that do not cross each other, right? So we can't even do like... This is not a polygon because it crosses each other itself. Um, okay, you can classify polygons using one or more of the following attributes. So what's an attribute? An attribute is a characteristic of a figure. So for example, if I said, my hair is curly, that would be an attribute of myself. I have blue eyes. Like, what do I look like? What are its defining characteristics? Those are attributes. Um, so... We are going to look at number of sides, number of angles. Let's get started. An angle. Now, I think I pulled this off of something else. It's a couple pages before. This is like 14-1 angles. Okay. So I thought if we're going to talk about sides and angles, we need to know what angles are first. So an angle is made when two rays share the same end point. So here's what we've got here. Okay. We've got lines go on forever in both directions that's called a line then if it stops or it starts and stops okay these this does not go on forever it is called a line segment because it is a segment or a piece of a line okay and then there's a thing called a ray a ray starts somewhere but it goes on forever. So it has one end point and then it goes on forever. So that's called a ray. So an angle is made when two rays share the same end point. Okay, so we can see the end point here. And then there's a ray going that way, a ray going that way. And then here is our angle. Okay, a ray is part of a line that has one end point and extends in one direction without ending. An end point is a point at the beginning of a ray. The shared point, end point is called the vertex. Okay, so where two lines or two line segments or two rays come together, that's always called a vertex. Okay, I'm throwing a lot of vocabulary words at you, and I know this is the last lesson, um, so just bear with me. Do your best. You're doing great. Keep up the hard work. And let's keep going. So if we use an index card, okay, that's these little guys right here. That has a 90 degree angle, okay? And a 90 degree angle is also called a square corner, right? It's where two lines intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay? Um, perpendicular lines are also 90 degree angles. Um, so right here, this line and this line, the red ones, makes a 90 degree angle in this little box that I'm drawing right now that shows that it's 90 degrees. Okay, so those are right angles. Now, if we look at the red angle for this one right here, we notice if I take my index card that it doesn't match up and it's actually a smaller angle, right? Because it's only going to here, whereas a 90 degree angle would go from here to here. Okay, so we know it's smaller than 90 degrees and that's called acute. How I remember is anything, it's anything less than 90 degrees, so it's an acute little angle. A cute little angle, right? Because they're little, they're smaller than that 90 degree. So here's our 90 degree, acute would be something less than that. Because when we're talking angles, we're talking about kind of a motion even. Whereas if I started here and I went up, like here, I started here and I went up. So those are, so this would be acute, a 
acute, acute little angle, C-U-T-E. And this is a right angle. And then we have angles that are larger. So if you look at this example right here, when we held up the uh, index card, you notice we have some extra angle there. So those are called obtuse angles, right? They're the big guys, obtuse angles. So those would be something that are larger, anything larger, even if it's 91 degrees, anything larger than a 90 degree angle is an obtuse angle, obtuse, okay? So you have a cute little angle, right angle, and obtuse angles are bigger than a right angle. So these are important angles that we need to know when we're classifying things. So, okay. Now we're back on your page. Those, that was just kind of like some background knowledge I need you to know about, so now we can move on here. Um, so let's look at the example one. Look at the soccer ball. The blue shape outlined in white is called a polygon. Okay, that blue shape there, a polygon. Describe and classify the polygon by its attributes. Okay, so that shape right there has five sides. Okay, so the shape has five sides. Well, the blue shape outlined in white. Yeah, I can not tell if we we're talking about the white shape, but it says blue. Okay, five sides. And how many angles does it have? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five sides, five angles. So the shape is called a pentagon. So pentagons have five sides, okay? So here we have another shape. Let's see, how many sides does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. An eight-sided figure. How many angles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight angles. Those are also called vertices. If we're referring to one, uh, one corner, we call it a vertex. But if it's more than one, it's called vertices. Okay, so eight-sided shape is called an octagon. I like to remember that one because octopus have eight legs and an octagon has eight sides. Okay, and my little trick for the Pentagon is there's a famous house, a famous building in Washington, D.C. called the Pentagon, and it's shaped like a Pentagon. Okay, so that's kind of how I remember, okay, there's that building in Washington, D.C. called the Pentagon, five sides, five angles. Um, octagon, eight sides, eight angles, because of octopus, have eight legs. Tentacles. Let's keep going. So here's our little cheat sheet. What is a uh, shape that has three sides, three angles? Triangle, right? Tri means three, T-R-I. Um, what's a shape that has four sides, four angles? Quad, or lateral. Quad means four. So we're talking here, any shape with four sides is called a quadrilateral. And I love teaching about quadrilaterals. I am so bummed we're not getting it to it this year. So we will 100% be getting to it next year. Quadrilaterals are my fave. Okay, and then we have five-sided shapes are pentagons. Notice it's not just this shape, it's also this shape. Any shape that has five sides, pentagon. Any shape that has six sides, hexagon. Now I remember hexagon because they have an X in the same spot that six does, hex, six, hexagon. Uh, seven's not a super common shape that we talk about, so I guess we're just skipping that. Uh, but an eight-sided figure is called octagon. Okay, it's not just this. These first pictures here are all called regular figures because they all have the same size, uh, same length of sides, same length of angles. Um, so they're called regular. Um, these guys over here are irregular shapes because they're just kind of crazy all over the place types of shapes. So this is our kind of our cheat sheet. Hopefully you've heard these words before 
and let's keep going. Describe the shape of the sign below. Determine the number of sides and angles, then classify the shape. Okay, so we've got one, two, three sides. One, two, three angles. So that is a, not an, a triangle. Hopefully that one was super simple. Okay, this side, or this shape has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six angles. And a shape with six sides and six angles is called a hexagon. Okay, uh, three sides, three angles, triangle. Okay, here we go, guys. Classify the polygons that are used to create the figure shown. Okay, so first we're talking about these green shapes here, and those are called triangles. Triangles. This big daddy shape in the middle is called a one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides is called a hexagon. And then notice this. We have one, two, three, four sided shape, a one, two, three, four sided shape. Those are both called quadrilaterals because they have four sides. Now, this is where I'm so missing. This guy right here has four equal sides, but does not have 90 degree angles. That is called a rhombus. A rhombus. You may have known it in kindergarten terms or first grade terms as a diamond, uh, but us mathematicians now know that it's actually called a rhombus. And then this red shape over here is called a trapezoid. Trapezoid. I love these names, so cool. I wish I could be the person that came up with these neat quadrilateral names. Um, so anyways, those are the shapes that we have here. So a square is a polygon because all of these shapes we're talking about are technically polygons, right? Triangle is a polygon. Quadrilateral is a polygon. Hexagon, hexagon is a polygon. Um, so if we're talking about a square, we're asking ourselves, how many sides does a square have? It has four. So another name for a square other than polygon could be quadrilateral is another name for a square because it has four sides. Okay, use math tools. Draw and label the polygon you would get when you fold the hexagon shown in half along the dotted line. Explain why the new shape has four sides even though half of six is three. Okay, right? Like, because if I have this shape, it is a hexagon, it has six sides, this one does. If I fold it in half and I cut it, my new shape is this, trapezoid. Um, but we aren't learning trapezoids and those sort of things right now, we're calling it a quadrilateral. Okay, and it says we need to explain why the new shape is, has four sides even though half of six is three. Okay, so I added a side when I folded and cut the hexagon um, and I made a trapezoid. There it is. All right. All right. So here we have Jack. He says that there are no two sided polygons. Then Martin draws the figure shown here and says, this is a polygon. This is a two sided polygon. Who is correct? Okay, so I'm going to look at this definition down here because this is the definition of a polygon, right? It is a closed, is this shape closed? Yes, I cannot get inside. 
two-dimensional figure. Yes, it is a two-dimensional figure, right? It's flat on a piece of paper with three or more straight sides. Look at this side. Is this a straight side? No way it is not. Um, we should say who is correct? Jack is correct because polygons must be made with straight sides. Okay, so it cannot have any curved sides. That does not make it a polygon. So we know that this is not, this is not a polygon. We actually call it a semicircle. Uh, okay, so let's get our definitions. We already did polygon. It is a closed two-dimensional figure formed with three or more straight sides that do not cross each other. Okay, a blank is a polygon with six sides, six angles. That is our friend the hexagon. Hexagon six. And for number nine down here, a blank is a polygon with four side, four angles. And that's a quadrilateral. And like I said before too, when we go into quadrilaterals, you're gonna start hearing words like rectangles, squares, parallelograms, rhombus, trapezoid, right? So there's lots of different quadrilaterals that we identify with a special name. Um, but for today's purposes, we're just calling them all quadrilaterals because that's what they all are. Um, test practice, which one of these is a hexagon? Okay, so we know this one's not, it's not closed, right? I can get in right here, not closed. Uh, one, two, three, four, five shapes, five sides. Not a hexagon, that's a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. Okay, that one is a hexagon. And this one's quadrilateral. So we know that the answer is C. C is a hexagon because it has six sides. All right, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.